Ladies and gentlemen, the Buckeyes are hot. Ohio State has added another commitment in the class of 2024 as Miles Lockhart, a four-star cornerback from Basha High School in Chandler, Arizona, has just announced his college football future. Lockhart is joining me on the latest episode of Bermanology presented by the podcast to talk about his decision and what made Ohio State the right choice for him. Let's get to it. As promised, Miles Lockhart joins us now. Miles, congratulations. You've just announced your long-awaited Ohio State commitment. And uh, just first and foremost, that weight off of your shoulders, how does it feel? It feels amazing, man. Like It feels like something that I've been, I've been waiting for for a long time, like you said. Um, and, and just letting everybody know that for 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 like just the public and everybody know that is just huge to me. Um, and it's great. It feels like a huge weight has been lifted off my shoulders, just like you said as well. Um, it, it, it's finally time, really. So I'm just, I'm glad I'm home. I think um, your recruiting, your recruitment is one of the more interesting that I can recall in some time. And I'm going to say this in a way because people are looking at it from the outside, looking in and like, oh, what's interesting? Right. Ohio, yeah. Ohio, Ohio State was the team that you said was your leader in June of 2022. They were the team you said was your leader in November of 2022, April of 2023, June of 2023. <laughs> now you commit in July of 20. But you're the perfect example that uh, that shows you don't have to be full of game playing and drama in order to still do your due diligence and make sure that a school is the one you want. And I, I think it there's a lot to be said, and you you deserve a lot of credit for handling the way. Like it's not a surprise, but at the same time, like you have made darn sure every step of the way that this is what was the right fit for you. Mm -hmm. What was it about Ohio State that led you to this point? I mean, and what was it initially the first the first moment on campus to to the last moment on campus? You know, what what, what has it been that shows you, hey, this is the only place I'm even going to consider? Right. No, my first time going down there it just it blew me out of the water already. Like that was a that was a school that I've never been to a school of that type of you know rank or, or like everybody knows who Ohio State is, right? It's just one of those schools. So just going there, I was just like. I was in awe, really, but it like the coaches don't try to take it like it's too big. They they get to know you on a personal level, um, and they recruit you just like any other school. They recruited me the hardest um, out of any other school, and that's I give them the most respect for that. And that's why I always felt like I was at home, um, and I, I didn't feel a need to lie to anybody, um, to anybody what else I was thinking. Like I mean, Ohio State was my leader really ever since they offered me. They uh they offer every everything that every other school that I had offers from offered, but just ten times better, um and, and it was really just a no brainer for me. Uh, so I, I didn't feel like I needed to build up anything like that. They were my leader all the way really through my recruitment, and uh, that's definitely what led to me committing there. You know, you you made trips elsewhere. You went to Wisconsin. You went to Oregon. Two very different types of places than Ohio State. Yeah. Two very different types of of campuses. Two different types of cities. Uh, being a Phoenix kid was was part of the allure. The fact that Ohio State is a college city, uh, that Cincinnati or so Cincinnati, the Columbus is a. Yeah. I'm thinking about the Reds game uh, in, the Taylor, <laughs> in the Taylor Swift concert that that's uh, been happening there. So, uh, with uh, with Columbus being a college city, it's it's unlike most places. Absolutely no, like it, it's unlike really of uh, most places I've been like I really fell in love with the city like it, it's really a city really like I didn't think of that before I got there I thought it was gonna be a lot different than what it was when I got there and you know it, it feels like it felt like home since I was been there but it just felt like it feels like it more and more um it, it's a lot different but um I love it a lot um, and I feel like it's definitely gonna take care of me for those next three to five years that I'm gonna be here Let's go back to that camp in June of 2022, if we can. You showed up there relatively unknown in a lot of ways. Ohio State offers you at the time, Tim Walton. You ran like a 4-4-1 or something. I, I don't remember exactly what it was, but you were one of the fastest guys in camp. Mm -hmm. You're not the tallest cornerback, but you're combative and physical. Do you remember what it was that, that you did that day that Coach Day and Coach Walton were like, hey, we got to offer this kid? Right. No. So before I even went there, I talked to Coach Walton. He told me, he said, I really like your film. I like the way you play. Um, but I really want to, you know, get my hands on you in person, see how you really move in person, um, like verify my speed, verify how 
how big I was. So when I got to the campus and everything, um, I ran a four four. That was the first thing I did, and uh, that that was one thing that he said. Once once I did that, he said he told me in his head he already offered me. Um, but you know, I went through my drills um, when they had me at the front of the line. I was leading the drills and everything. So I feel like I just had a really good camp overall. I had a good showing, um, and, and he liked obviously my speed and. Uh, he liked the way that I was moving around and things like that. But like you said, he likes my physicality and everything like that on my film as well. Yeah, as I watch your film, that's what stands out to me because, again, you're not one of the, these six one, six two yeah. corners, but you are uh, happy to hit people, which is rare uh, for high school corners who sometimes are divas. I'm not sure if you're aware of that. Um, <laughs> no, absolutely. You know, for, for you, then the process unfolds, right? There's the visit in November. There's the springtime visit all each step along the way. There was a conversation that we had and it was any chance that you're going to go public. No, I'm waiting. Till, I'm waiting till July. Any chance you're going to go public. No, I'm waiting till July. Any chance. No, I'm waiting till July. What was it that forced you or, or made you say to yourself, slow down miles. This isn't, you don't have to jump in right away. No, yes, sir. Um, it's like I said, it's a long process and my parents really wanted me to take my time with it. Like, um, I really was big on Ohio State. I told them I wanted to commit there a long time ago. And they told me they, they were very supportive of that, but they also wanted me to just weigh my other options, um, see what else is out there, just to go see the other schools, just to enjoy my recruitment a little bit um, and not end it too soon. But the reason I really wanted to do it in July is because of my grandma. Um, I'm going to be committing on her birthday. I'm doing it for her. Uh, she just got diagnosed with cancer kind of recently. so. It's just, you know, I think it'd be a good tribute for her. Um, you know, she's going to be in Arizona and everything. So that was really the big reason why I, I stuck with July as well. Though. Well, I mean, I think that those sorts of stories are what makes recruiting fascinating to me, worth paying attention to, because every single prospect around the country has your own why. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, we don't always get a chance to explore it. In the world that we live in now, the Internet, social media has made <laughs> recruiting sometimes very um superficial but Absolutely. you're still making the biggest decision of your entire life how relieved were you when mom and dad are on campus with you and they got to feel what you felt and and realize that it wasn't just you being um overwhelmed by the brand of ohio state but it was actually about something different it was huge man like that, that's another reason i wanted to bring my sisters um, my sisters came with me and it was just like, it was great seeing it and just seeing like the smiles on their faces. I mean, I just, I know they're all real proud of me and they're, they're very supportive and I'm thankful for them. I'm 110%. They've always been with me on this way, but I'm just thankful that they, you know, respect my decision. They're 110 with it. They love Ohio State probably more than I do. So, um, you know, I'm just, I'm just thankful for them. And I was real glad that I was able to take them up on that trip and they were able to see that with some close in person, um, make it personal. You, officially told the coaching staff on june 23rd the first night of your official visit um at at the recruit dinner bryce west gets up and makes his announcement and tells people he's going to ohio state did you and bryce plan that together or did did he steal your thunder did he make you i mean how did it feel like when he did that first were you like what the hell man like how, how did how did no, that work? so so the thing is i mean i was talking to bryce i told him i said i'm gonna commit at the dinner um and he came up to me he was oh i wanted to do the same thing type of stuff and i was like all right and he said i need the okay for my mom and we were on the field right about to go to the dinner and he came up and he was like she gave me the okay i was like all right so i knew Demur i knew demari was gonna commit to i knew all three of us so we planned it out and like we were we were just making sure whatever so demari went first he committed and then it came to me i committed and then bryce so we got it we had it all lined up um it was it wasn't planned like before but like a couple couple hours before we had it all all in plan together <laughs> the, did the coaches have any idea that was happening that day uh probably not all three of us to be completely honest with you like they didn't know i think it was at the dinner it was only me and brent uh Zdebski. he knew i had called him before and i told him i wanted to do it like at the dinner before i even came up to my ov he was like yeah that'll be real dope so he knew it was coming um i mean i, I feel like the coaches knew that i was going to at least commit there but i don't think they knew that no oh. You are now committed to Ohio State. The Buckeyes have uh, a, a contingent of Arizona players now with Keon Grays, Lathan Ransom, Denzel Burke. Uh, 
you know, yourself, Denzel, Lathan, all all defensive backs. Yep. None of those none of those guys have had an easy path at Ohio State. And and I think that that sometimes gets lost in the glamour and glitz of playing college football. Like mm-hmm. everyone thinks it's easy. Lathan broke his leg in a million pieces. Uh Denzel yeah. had a pretty uh, up and down sophomore year and nursing a lot of injuries. Keon's fighting to get on the field. How much conversation have you had with those guys about what college football is really like and how has that prepared you mentally for what's coming next for you? Yeah, I mean, a lot of times when you go on the visits, it's a lot of glitz and glamour. Obviously, you know, they're trying to really impress you, trying to get you to commit. It's a lot different when you're really getting there and you're playing. So we have a lot of those real conversations, especially with Keon, because that's like a guy that I'm really close to. We grew up really in the same area, so I stay with him all the time. But we have those real conversations all the time. Like it's it, it's real tough. They tell you like, don't come to Ohio if you're not ready to work. Um, like it, it's not gonna be easy. But I don't want it easy. Like I wanted it. I wanted it tough. Um, so that's why I chose I chose Ohio State. I mean, they're, they're, that's a, there's a reason why they're competing for national championships every year. They put out first round picks. You don't want it to be easy. So just having a lot of those real conversations and just kind of getting mentally prepared for what's to come. With Bryce committed, with you committed, with Jalen McClain in early June, there's now um, a little bit of momentum happening on the defensive side of the ball recruiting-wise. But there's a lot of guys out there that you've been forming relationships with for the last year. How uh, you're, you're an affable guy. like You're obviously easy to talk to and, and comfortable in your own skin. How comfortable are you talking to other people about their decision and trying to convince, not convince them, because you nobody wants that. You wouldn't want that if you were in their shoes. But right, yeah. How comfortable are you just in, in that space now turning from recruited to recruiter? Right. Um, I definitely respect people's space and, and their decision. Um, but no, I, I'm definitely not shy to go to go take, hit someone's DMs, just tell them how much we want them, how much we need them, really. Like I, with Aaron, that's a dude that I'm recruiting a lot. That's a guy that I feel like we need to finish this this corner group. Um, and I feel like he can make us this, like, a certified number one, t- like, corner group in the nation. Um, so I, I wouldn't say I'm afraid to go recruit. I'm, I'm definitely going to try to get the best guys that we can get, make the best defense we can get, um, just to compete for, for these national championships that we're about to go to. You know, obviously there are multiple spots, even at cornerback. There's the inside corner. Yeah. There's two outside corners. There's – uh, guys like it says something about you and Bryce to me that your guys are actively pursuing Aaron Scott, knowing that he's a guy who would be competing against you for playing time. You're, you're uh, an inside guy pretty much all the way. Right. And you know that. So yep. it, is it, does it make it harder when you approach Aaron to say, Hey, uh, because Michigan doesn't have any corners committed and that's what they're selling him. Right. How do you, how do you guys attack it? Because it's, it can't just be you're from Ohio, you're supposed to play at Ohio State. How how do you actually build that relationship where it, where it matters? No, that's definitely something I went away from. I never told him he needs to stay home because he's from Ohio. I feel like he's heard that a ton. Um, so really, what I told him is like we just gonna compete at practice every day. We're all gonna make each other better. You're gonna be going against the best receivers in the nation. You're gonna have Coach Wall coaching you up, Coach Knowles. You just got great coaches, a great group of guys surrounding you. And I feel like if you have, you know, the top players at your position, you're competing with them every day, you're going to get better. You're going to learn from each other. I'll learn from him. I'll learn from Bryce. They'll learn from me. It's just, it's a shared thing. I mean, we're going to be a team. So it's not about who's playing, who's doing that. We're working as a team um, to, to, to reach a common goal. And that, that's really what I told him. Like, we we're trying to build this team up so we can go compete for the Natties, go beat Team of North every year, um, and, and just do the things that Ohio State's meant to be. Uh, so that's definitely a lot of stuff that I like to hit on. I, I didn't really, you know, bring up the part of from Ohio. I mean, I just it's, it doesn't mean anything to me. Yeah. As you've been leaning into this decision for over the last year now, I assume you've spent a lot of time learning about the things that Ohio State does and the, the traditions, the things that make Ohio State special. <laughs> yeah. What it, what is something that like has stood out to you in the last year of your research? Because I know that's been a big part of why you haven't made the decision until now. You're trying to figure out everything about this place that's going to be your future home. Yes, sir. What what stood out the most to you about Ohio State, or what did you learn in the last year that surprised you? I know that's a weird question, but that's my job is to put you on the spot just a little bit. I'm sorry. Can you say that one more time? 
Yeah, uh, I, I my my job is to put you on the spot a little bit. So, uh, <laughs> you know what what really did what surprised you? What did you learn about Ohio State that you're like, uh, oh wow, no, I didn't know that, and, and yeah. you know that made you realize, oh, this this is real. It's not even something that I didn't know. It's just what I didn't realize of how big a brand that Ohio State is. Like everybody knows Ohio State. I'll, I'll wear my Ohio State shirt out. Everybody's OH, you know, like everybody knows Ohio State. Um, and, and one thing about them too is everybody knows that they also have great DBs. They have great receivers, but they're known for the BIA um, DBs. So that's really a thing to me. Like I want to bring that back and why not go to a school that that's known for that? Um, and that, that was a real big thing to me. And it, it was something that I had to do more research on all the great guys that came out of there doing great in the NFL. Um, Dezo Ward, Marshall Lattimore getting paid a ton of money. Uh, so I definitely had to do a ton of research, but you know, you already know a little bit about Ohio State just being a fan of football. Um, but I just, I did definitely take it a little bit deeper. As you've looked back through the legacy of defensive backs, is there a guy that, that you've studied up on or that you have become a big fan of? Well, before I even was recruited by LSU, um, Jeff Okuda was a guy that I literally watched. I, I made sure I checked into every single game that he played. It's just, I loved how he played in college. He had physicality, played coverage. It was real long. Like, I feel like he could do anything. So that was a dude that I really loved to watch. I like to try to pattern my game out there. I know I'm not a six one corner that has crazy long arms, but I feel like I can still pattern my game, play real physical, be a smart corner, and be just in the right positions at the right time. Uh, I think if you talk to longtime Ohio State fans, people who have watched the program, if if you've never looked up or researched Antoine Winfield, Winfield, that, yep, that, that's pro you know as a he's he's like five eight and a quarter, uh, and and was the best cornerback in the country, and was yeah, probably scored. the most phys the most physical corner I've ever seen Ohio State have, who just loved to hit people, um, had a pretty darn good NFL career as well, and now his son is as well. So, um, yeah, right. It, it, there's such a deep tradition and legacy that. I, I think sometimes and I, I lived in Phoenix for a while, as you probably recognize when we text my phone number being a, a area code <laughs> out there. But yeah, how do you now change the minds of people out there who think that, oh, you why you don't because I'm sure there's Arizona State fans, people who want you to stay home, go to yeah. Arizona or a huge USC contingent out there in, in Phoenix as well. Yeah. What what was what is what do you tell people who ask you? Why, Miles? Why do you have to go to Ohio State to go to college? What, what's the final thing that you let people know? My dad went to U of A, too, so they, they were real big on me, I would say. They were real upset. But, I mean, I tell them, like, it's literally Ohio State. Like, like it's it's a brand that's huge. It's beyond, beyond me just going to college to play football. Like, they, they're going to take care of you. Like they say, like, it's a 40-year decision. Like, that's really real in Ohio State. If, even if football didn't work out, they're going to make sure they take care of you. But that's but football is just something that they they do, you know, like they develop their dudes, especially at my position. Um, and like my, my relationships with them are just unmatched with any other team. And it was really just that comfort fit. It was a lot more comfortable than me just going down the street to go play at ASU, um, you know, and, and staying home to me really wasn't something big. I really wanted to get out of out of Arizona and just go experience something a little different. Um, and, I, and I think I made the right des decision by far. You've seen all four seasons in your times at Ohio State. You've been to you've been to Columbus in the spring, in the fall, uh, in in late winter. You've been, you know, you've seen it all. Is there any concern that the weather is going to be annoying to you? Or you got, I mean, sure, you can get a, a sweatshirt or two, right? <laughs> right. Like, I mean, right now it's like 107 outside, so you know the yeah. heat to me is something we got here. Being cold, obviously, is something I'm not used to, but. I mean, that's something I'm going to have to get used to. I don't think it's going to be a problem for me. Um, like, I, I'm here for a reason. I'm not going to let weather just, uh, you know, take away from that. I'm not going to let that bother me. Uh, we'll, we'll get past that. You get used to it and everything. I don't, I don't think I'll have any, any problems with that. No, eventually, if, if you get where you want to go, you're going to be playing in the cold at, at times. Anyways, so exactly. You're going to have to deal with that. So, look, man, um, I really am glad we waited to have you on the show because we had talked about it a few times and, I felt like we we both sort of knew where this was going in your recruitment yeah. for a while. And I, I really wanted to just sort of let it unfold because, as I said, I think that the way you've handled things is so commendable in a world where people are not just expecting theatrics and games, but almost demanding it from you. And uh, kudos to you for how this has gone. 
And congratulations, you've uh, obviously thought it out and made a decision that, that you are 1,000% comfortable with. So congratulations on your decision. Yes, sir. I appreciate you. Go Bucks. No problem. That's Miles Lockhart, folks. I'm Jeremy Birmingham. This has been a commitment edition of Bermanology on the podcast. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.